Thank you so much for doing this interview with me. Uh, before we even begin, I have to say, really, thank you for doing it because you just mentioned something to me before we began. What did you say to me a second ago before we began? Because there's a very good reason why. If you sound a little tired, it's completely understandable. <laughs> I uh, I just got off a plane from Toronto back to Winnipeg. Oh, my goodness. I think the big reason why you got off uh, that plane, or I should say you were in Toronto, RBC X Music Program. First up, congratulations on being part of the program. You were here for something with First Up, weren't you? Thank you very much. Yeah, I was. I was just in Toronto for the first up with RBCX Music Summit, where they brought in all the artists on this year's kind of roster. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they flew us out and we had a couple of days of workshops and networking and meeting all the other artists. And it was incredible. How did you hear about this program? So my parents are huge supporters of my music i'm very fortunate and they love to send me any and everything um and so they had actually sent me they made me aware of this program mm -hmm. and i was in the process of applying for a lot of grants and programs as most artists are and so i applied for this and i didn't think anything of it and then a couple months later i received an email out of the blue after getting a lot of rejection emails mm -hmm. or hearing nothing back. And so it was a big surprise, but um, I, I feel so lucky and so happy to be cho have been chosen for it. Now you talked about the summit that you were just involved with. How, what has this program done for you so far? Because, and, and for folks who don't know exactly what it is, mm -hmm. what is first up? Yeah. So the, the first up with the RBCX music program takes, um, emerging Canadian artists and gives them opportunities like performance opportunities, uh, workshop opportunities, funding, all kinds of stuff, um, education um, to allow them to keep growing their career. So that was huge for me this year. It's been a really big growth year in my in my music career. And so I've been able to, you know, fund um, some singles for this year coming up and then go to the program um, in Toronto, meet a whole lot of people, learn a lot of amazing things about the industry. How much more important is this being part of this now, especially because we just came out of a pandemic, which yeah. literally when it came to the arts, shut yeah. us all down. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, ex experiences like these last couple of days that I had in Toronto wouldn't have happened. Um, and also performances were shut down, right? So I'm just actually getting started in my live performance career. I was doing a lot of just recording before and, um, and just like making music at home. And so this has allowed me to kind of get my name out there. They have a lot of PR opportunities, like the one, like me talking to you right now <laughs> and, uh, going to Toronto, meeting people in person, which really really changes things you forget in the pandemic how valuable personal contact is and you know face-to-face -face contact um and that was just shown in over the past couple of days how important it really is you know you kind of talked about the contact and being with people and stuff like that and mm -hmm. because of course that's what we had lack of your music kind of reflects that doesn't it absolutely yeah, because I've lived in so many places over the past five, six years. I lived in, I'm from Winnipeg, and I lived in the States, and I lived in Spain. I've had a lot of feelings of kind of estrangement and being, you know, not knowing exactly where I would call my home. Um, and so I like to build community to help me feel at home and help others feel at home wherever I am. I'm sorry to interrupt, and I want to jump into that because I yeah. think that's so important because especially during the pandemic, we were all experiencing that. Absolutely. What did people come back to say to you? Because when you are writing about your experiences, are yeah. you hearing from people going, oh, my goodness, even though you're writing about yourself, it feels like you're writing about me and my story. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and that's the thing is that, you know, when you write things that are so personal to yourself, the more personal they are, 
the the more they'll connect with other people you know because there are certain songs that i know it's not written about me the song that i'm listening to or let, let's take for example uh five days in may by blue rodeo mm-hmm. okay so i'm thinking of when he's talking about walking on the beach or you know names written in the sand stuff like that like i can literally see it playing in my head like a movie about myself so i imagine that's how it's like for other people when they listen to my music well let's talk about how this all began to you talk about winnipeg the love of music where does that all begin for you and it sounds like your parents were big supporters of you from day one absolutely and they actually drove me off course for a while because I I was my family is very musical and my mm-hmm. my Oma is a violin teacher and so I was I, I started from the beginning playing violin when I was really young when I was about four or five and I really didn't like it I, I really dreaded every lesson <laughs> and my parents forced me to be in choir a children's choir when I was young and I also really wasn't a fan and so then it it drove me away from it drove me to reject music for a long time until high school when I had a, a teammate on my on my hockey team who would send me videos of her playing and, and singing um, and playing guitar. And I thought, wow, I want to be just like her. So I started teaching myself the guitar and it kind of found its way back into my life. You talked about hockey, which was an important part of your life. Was there yeah. a point in time where maybe you thought that was the you know you were gonna go down that road yeah absolutely um the thing is there's some differences because women still can't really make a living off of playing professional hockey um so i knew i wanted it to take me to university but i didn't have anything planned beyond that and that was that that was okay um and that and that's what i did it got i got it to take me to university i went to the states and then I quit in my second year and decided to keep studying there and pursue music a little more with my time that I had. And then just like music found its way back into my life, hockey later on found its way back into my life. I love <laughs> and now that. I'm still playing it. Now I'm still playing it and doing music. So yeah. I was going to say, is that one of your jerseys or that we're looking at behind you? Yeah. So here I'm going to. Yeah, go right ahead, please. Oh, just kidding. My headphones can't reach. Okay, so the white one, uh-huh. um, that was from my club team in Spain where I was for the last year and a half. And then underneath that is the Team Spain jersey. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, for the national I, team. I didn't even know Spain had hockey. <laughs> I get that a lot, actually. But uh, it's funny because they have 11 rinks in the whole country, and I have, we have 11 rinks in my in my part of winnipeg <laughs> you know canada we yeah. love hockey yeah. i always love the video uh, you've probably seen it where they say where canadian hockey players are born and it's the pond with the yeah the ice pond with the hole and absolutely the hockey player just comes out of it and just starts skating away that was me <laughs> yeah i believe it um you know during this time with hockey and things that were going on Lyrically, though, were you writing poetry or anything like that that you didn't really realize would somehow become lyrics to songs? Because you sound like you were somebody who didn't know she was artistic. And to release, as we all know, because when you're artistic, like you can't stop a person from doing it. Even if they don't get paid for it, they're still going to do yeah. it. Absolutely. Um, were you doing things? Were you writing things and not realizing that it would become songs in the future? Um, so in university, I I studied creative writing and I studied poetry. And so I wrote a lot. I wrote a lot of poetry in university. And then when I graduated, for the first time in my life, I wasn't in any kind of school. And I just I just pumped the brakes on everything. Wow. And And I graduated right when the pandemic started. So the pandemic happened, I pumped the brakes on creativity. um, And I just took that summer at least to kind of rest and move out to Spain. And then I started, I started writing again, just for fun, not really to release anything. um, Back in 2020, like September ish. Um, 
I ended up releasing like South of Spain anyway and some other stuff. But I'm always writing like notes on my phone. That's a big one. There's always there's like a million notes on my phone of random things that sometimes translate are like puzzle pieces to a song and sometimes they just stay there and I look back on them and go, What was I writing? And and I, I think that's an amazing thing because when you're still trying to figure out your life and then the pandemic happens. Yeah. Could I say that that was sort of like a bit of a savior for you in keeping you on the path to why we're sitting here talking and why you're part of the program and all these other great things are happening for you? Absolutely. I was very lonely. Like I was very, very lonely when it started. I just moved to a new continent in the middle of the pandemic. I I didn't know anybody. And so I really... I was talking to myself in a lot of what I was writing wow. because that's, that's the person I had to spend time with. And so I, I think I, it also helped in my relationship with myself. Mm -hmm. When things started to change up and things started to open up, what was going on musically for you um, in thinking of terms of, okay, I've got these songs or whatever I've released here, there, is it time for an EP? Is it time for an album? When did that start to develop for you going, hey, I think I've got enough here? Yeah. Um, I So the Canola EP that I released back in October actually has been through so many different faces. Like there were like four other songs that I was going to release on it. And then it changed up and became five other songs. Um, but I was really experimenting with my sound um bef yeah oh yeah we're gonna get into that okay. next <laughs> okay i was really experimenting with my sound and i i hit a point where i was listening to a lot a lot of folk um and so i just decided i was gonna dive in to that and also because it was just me and my guitar in the room and so that's what i had access to and that's what i was recording with mm -hmm. um and writing songs with and so I was in a place that was very lonely, but also very peaceful. And so that's where a lot of this came from. And I just decided I wanted to make a, an EP of, of folk singer songwriter music. Is it folk though? Because I've listened, I've, I've gone on and I've seen your videos and I've listened to the music <laughs> and, and things. And I honestly have no, and I say this of course with absolute respect because this is what an artist is about. I could not even put you in a category because yeah. one moment I'm hearing, you know, I'm hearing the lyrics and songs and things like that. And then there are songs I'm hearing. I'm waiting for the lyrics. Are there supposed to be lyrics here? Like it's so yeah. many different yeah. aspects and it's almost, how do I put this? People say when they talk about music, uh, music is emotion, it's expression or whatever else. Your music is pure expression. <laughs> Bottom line. Thank you. Um, so the, in the last couple of days, I was actually having a conversation with a couple of the other RBCX music um, artists, uh, Desire and then um, Kate and Lauren from Vox Rea. And we were talking about how, how crazy accessible all kinds of music are right now with streaming platforms. Yes. And so how a lot of people's genres right now are very very um like mush together um extremely and so it's really hard because everybody has so many different inspirations and everybody is making a whole lot of stuff that overlaps in genres and so i think what i tried to do was have the guiding light of of what I was listening to was primarily folk and singer songwriter music. But when it came out of me, it was going to, it was going to take on a life of whatever it wanted to be. Oh, hell yeah. On that one. And I love that too. If there's one song right now that you have out that really represents who you are now, what single would that be? And what would that song, what is that song about? So I have nothing out that represents me in this moment. Mm hmm because because every because because i'm changing so fast and the music i'm making is changing so fast like what represents me in this moment will be out a year from now you know you know what i mean 
Um, and I hear that with a lot of artists. The closest thing that I come back to would probably be canola just because it shows the growth in myself from the whole start of the song to the very end of the song I really switch up my mentality when writing the song and I actually wrote them I, I wrote it in two different points of where I was at where I was at when I started writing the song was very different it was a couple months later when I finished the song which I don't do very often and so because of that it the the perspective shifts a little bit at the end of the song and so I'm kind of more where I am, where I was at the end of the song. So are we looking at a year's time that there will be a new EP and album coming out from you? So far, I have planned a couple singles going out throughout this year. I'm recording. I'm in the studio. I was supposed to be in the studio in June, got there the first day and got COVID. Oh. And gave it to the gave it to the recording engineer <laughs> at House of Wonders. Here. Hey, I got a bonus for you here. Uh, yeah, so that so that was unfortunate, but uh, we ended up rescheduling to next week now, which is exciting. And it, and I think it was great because it allowed me to work on the song a little bit more. And you know, I I tend to in the past I've tended to rush things because I just want to make them and get them out. But I'm being very intentional with what I'm making right now. And so I have three three songs on the horizon right now. Okay. And just curious, will there ever be a project that you're going to have, not just with your music in this aspect, but will there be a visual aspect to those songs? Absolutely. I think that also comes with um, funding. Mm -hmm. And so that... That has been huge about this year with the with the first up with our RBC music program because I've been able to fund these singles that I'm releasing, um, which is huge. And um, I'm actually recording something later today, a visual component for a song that I'm releasing that is uh, in Spanish with a classical guitar and two friends playing with me. So that should be out. It's called Cassiopeia, and it should be out in January. I got a feeling. I got a feeling this is going. This is going to be going old school. Like I can see people closing their eyes, putting the headphones on, yeah. you know, putting your music on, listening, and then opening their eyes and watching the yeah. video to yeah. what you created. This is going to be a great, great experience. Before we wrap this up, shows. What's going to be happening with shows? And are you going to come back to Toronto? Just not for RBCX music, but also just perform for us. Absolutely. Um, I, I really loved my time in Toronto, so I'll definitely be back. Um, but I, um, I'm performing here next Friday in one week, so August 26th in Winnipeg mm -hmm. at the West End Cultural Centre. I'm opening up for a really good friend of mine, Lana Winterhalt, who's also an incredible musician. And then I moved to Ottawa at the end of <laughs> August. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be going to school there, doing a master's in music and culture, playing hockey. And I'll also be playing hockey in Toronto. Like, oh. game, uh, so, uh, so life is going to take me back there. Fantastic. Just curious, are you allowed to check in, in when you play hockey? Or is it strictly, you know? Um. Oh, in, in women's, you're not allowed to check. But there is a lot of contact, especially in North America. Yeah. They just they just le they just made it legal in the Swedish uh pro league so. okay we gotta get you over there so you can yeah. just write the quarters there thank yeah. you so much for doing this interview with me congratulations on being part of the program congrats on the music love your journey looking forward to speaking to you more in the future because i think there's so much more that you've got planned for us and i think it's going to be a great experience thank you again for the interview thank you so much for having me here it's been a real pleasure talking to you